Good afternoon, good morning. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about Super Search with Open Search and Python. My name is Laisa Ushoa. So a little bit about me, I work for Ivan. Uh, actually at Ivan we manage open source databases and I really like Python. I worked with Python for a, lo a long, lot of years. <laughs> and I happen to live in the city of Munich and I decided to organize Pilates Munich chapter there. You can follow me if you want to know more about Python events. I'm always attending. So today what we're going to be talking, we're going to be talking about what is open search, why should you consider open search in your project, and I will also uh, show you how to write some search queries in a live demo. So wish me luck, because live demos almost never work. So what is open search? Uh, if you are familiar with Elasticsearch, OpenSearch is a direct fork of Elasticsearch version 7.10. It actually has been a year, and now OpenSearch is in the version 2 already, and they do monthly releases, kind of, yeah, it's very frequently the releases for OpenSearch. If you don't, if you're not familiar with Elasticsearch, OpenSearch is also okay. Uh, I will also explain you that. So open search, as it has in the name, is open source, and it's also a search engine. It has support for REST API, so if you are a back-end developer or a front-end, maybe you're already familiar with it, and you don't need an extra language to deal with open search. But it does have support for uh, many languages in Python. Uh, Python is one of the uh, Go, PHP, and Java. It also offers you analytic suite, I think it's a fancy word to tell you that you can actually draw some uh, insights from your code or from your data and with the open search dashboards. And a lot of companies actually use open search not for search engine, but to analyze the logs. So they kind of send the logs there and it gives you a great overview. Very, very fast, open search is very fast. So why should you consider open search? Uh, when I think about open search, I try to actually focus on the superpowers of open search. So if you think open search would be a superhero, uh, what kind of superhero would open search be? So I would say that open search would speak several languages because it does have support for more than 30 languages. So for example, not uh, programming languages, human languages, like German, Spanish, Portuguese. So when you're sending your data to open source, you can specify which language it will be, uh, it's defined for, and it will optimize for search. I also think if open search would be a hero, uh, it would be able to read your mind, uh, so because you can, you can implement auto-completion. I think this is something that you may have seen, uh, in search engines, you are typing something and kind of tells, okay, maybe this person is looking for this, based on your relevance or some uh, information about you. So this is something that you can also do with open search. And if you think that open search could understand so many languages, more than 30, uh, the question would be, can open search understand my broken English? <laughs> the answer is yes, because you do have fast searching, so even if you mistype something, or yeah, if you have small mistakes, open search still will be able to bring you results. And if you're familiar with different databases that actually you have to provide a mapping or some sort of definitions from the beginning, uh, with open search you have something called dynamic mapping. What is that? With dynamic mapping, it actually you can just send your data to open search and it would uh, figure out what kind of field is in the data. Is it a text? Is it a float or any kind of material? So, but you can also define, you, so you have this flexibility, so it's, it's quite cool. So this would be some of the reasons, uh, I would say, why you should consider open search in your project. Now I'm gonna go over some search queries. Uh, actually for that, I have we're going to be using the Python open search client. Uh, lots of data. Uh, we are almost in the launch, so I pick up some lunch, uh, some recipes for us to work. And you can find it here in this repository. You can scan the QR code, or you can just go in the GitHub and fork it. The data looks a bit like this, so you can see the directions like how to prepare the food, and there are several fields here like data, categories, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
So I will show you now. If you go to the repository, you can see it here in the README. Uh, where do I take this data from? Uh, what kind of support e is there? Or what kind of queries I have it here? So I took the data from the Kaggle recipes, and you can also take it from there. And yeah, you can see it here, how to install and how to get started. So for our first, I already have an open source cluster running, so I'm not going to set up everything. And I already sent the data. But it's also, you can find it here in the repository. How did I do this? So now I will focus on the queries. The first one that I decide to uh, look for, so actually you can just go here and look for help, and it will show up what kind of uh, queries we have it here. So let's go to the first one, is the match query. So if I look for here, and I look in the match, and in the match, I'll be looking in the title for something very exotic. So the most exotic thing I could think about was chocolate and garlic. So that's what recipe that we're going to try to find out. I'm not sure who would eat this, but I think I would eat this, actually. <laughs> I like to try new things. So let's see if we can find out something here. So if I press Enter, and you can see it here that actually I do find some recipes. Uh, the first one is chocolate garlic, like a toaster bread, and the other ones are just have garlic on the title. You must be wondering, like, OK, if I'm looking for chocolate garlic, why is that I'm getting just recipes with garlic? The, question, the answer is that when you're working with the mesh query, uh, there is an operator that, by default, uses OR. So actually what it's doing is looking for chocolate or garlic, or chocolate garlic. And it will bring those results based in score. So that's why the first one is actually the most, uh, that has the two words. But if you, we want actually to find uh, only chocolate and garlic, we could also define the operator AND. So that's what I will do now. Whoops. Here. So you can see that I, came, I found out, yeah, there is just one. And I will definitely try. Uh, you must be wondering, like, what is the syntax? I will also show you. So in the match query, the syntax kind of looks like this. So I do have an open search client. And there is a method called search. And I have to specify which kind of index I'll be looking for. And I write the body with the query, which is a Python dictionary. And here I define which kind of query it is, which is the match one, and which field I'm looking for this. And ta-da, we have it here, chocolate garlic. I have specified the end operator here. So it's pretty straightforward. Now be one, you must be wondering, for example, if I try out here, uh, if I change the position between chocolate and garlic, I start with garlic and finish with chocolate, would I still get some match? Do you think I'll still get some match? Can you raise the over end? OK, I think everybody knows a lot about open search. But yes, uh, you would get some match. You still get the same uh, one that we saw. The thing is with the match, the position of the words that you are looking, they are not important. They are not so relevant. You still will bring results. But in some case, for example, if you are looking for someone's name in a database, and if you switch the surname with the name, uh, maybe you end up with someone different. So in some cases, you do want to consider the order of your query. So for that, you would use match phrase. And I will show you with an example what is the match phrase. So if I have here, uh, search.py match, oops, match phrase. And I'll be looking title. And I can define what I'm going to be looking for. For example, if I'm looking for uh, cake, coconut, and we're going to see what we can find. Actually, we don't find anything here. Uh, but I'm wondering, OK, I do have 20,000 recipes. I didn't find anything correct here. Because in the match phrase here, as it is right now, uh, it is looking exactly for those words in this order. Nothing in between, nothing swapped anything. So of course, if I correct that for coconut cake with the right word in English, I can see some results. And this makes sense, right? But yeah, even if you still want to see, like, OK, the relevance of the uh, is a bit important. Uh, but I'm, I'm wondering, OK, can I give some flexibility to the match phrase? 
Uh, yes, so in this case, if we want to correct the previous one and give some flexibility, in the match phrase there is something called a slope parameter. So the slope parameter works like this. It allow, it's the allowed distance between the words. In this case, by default, it's zero, so it means that these words have to be in this order to actually bring some result. But if I, if I actually now give a slope of one, it should work. So yeah, actually here you can see that now I've, I found cake with coconut uh, and so on. If I give a slope of two, it also works, and now we have even more because I'm giving more flexibility how this position of these words would be. Uh, but I'm a very visual person, and even with this, uh, maybe it's a bit confusing. What is actually the slope parameter? So I will show you what's the slope parameter. So here is a document that we, qu we queried, and this is our query. So in this case, if we try to identify slope has one, what we what it tries to do is actually, okay, let me see a combination of this. If I change the position of one of this word, would it still work? Yes, so basically the coconut could be in position three and the distance would be just one and it would work. Another example I could give you is like that I fix the coconut cake or the cake coconut because they are swapped. So if actually I try with a slope of two, uh, if you will bring the position two to the position one, and the position one to the position two, and then you will find it. So I hope this was a piece of cake to understand. It's pretty interesting, this kind of flexibility, because you don't expect always that the reader uh, writes exactly what they want. So it's important to give this flexibility. Now we'll be talking about fuzziness, uh, and for that, I try to think about an example that it's a bit complicated for me sometimes. For example, the, uh, I'll be using the match one, and I'll be looking in title for something that sometimes it can get wrong, like the word dessert. So there is desert and there is dessert. And they are very similar. <laughs> they even sound similar when you say it, but one is salty, I guess, and the other one is sweet. So if I try to mistype here and look for, for it, so if I'm looking for a desert here, I will probably not find anything because it's incorrect uh, word. But there is something called like fuzziness, which we can define, let me see if I wrote correct, has one, for example, and now we can actually find something. Because the difference between desert and dessert is one S. So the fuzziness, if you configure it to one, you will be able to get some results. How would it like be in a more conceptual way or like more general one? So for example, if words are uh, different, or for example, if you remove words or actually increase words, this all count has one distance. It, it, it uses something called Leverstein distance to actually calculate this, but it's pretty straightforward, it's about uh, this last one is about transpose of two uh, uh, letters that are close to each other, for example. And this is how you calculate the fuzziness. Uh, but you know, I think sometimes like, you just have your data, you don't know what is, how many mistakes are there, or what would be the best way. Actually, there is a parameter called auto that I will also show you that you can do that for easily. So here's like how the syntax works. You have the match and you have the title, and in this case, you have the query and you give the fuzziness. And then you can also put auto. So in this case, if I actually have it here has with auto, it will automatically look for what would be the best fuzziness to be used depending on the size of the word. So for long words, we're gonna be used a little bit more, and for smaller words, a little bit less. Uh, this is important to notice that if you don't configure your fuzziness correct, you may end up with no relevant results. Because if you swap everything, it may become an, another word and it's not relevant for you. The last one that I want to show you is, actually I want to try to find out uh, one recipe with a Guinness. Uh, I know you can't drink it, but can you cook with it? So let's see if we can find something. So I will just use uh, the match one again and Actually, I have to specify the file, and I will match. 
NWO's uh, title and the log for the word Guinness, which I hope I write correct. If I'm not, uh, you have to tell me. <laughs> but yes, so for example, this one is quite simple. I'm just looking for Guinness and match square it use, it gives you the score. So you see it here, there's more starter, which probably not nice, uh, but there are some cakes too here. So I think that's it, but I have just to show you dashboards. So open source also have open source dashboards would be similar to the Kibana ones, uh, but yes, looks like this. You can draw visualizations out of the box, and you can also do queries from there without any, with Rust API, for example. So that's it for today, and you can find the demo here. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, so um, thank you very much for the talk. We do have uh, time for questions, and uh, again, just uh, come to the microphone uh, so that uh, people watching online can also hear it and people on back. So, yes. Uh, do you know what the difference is between uh, Elasticsearch and OpenSearch? From the version 7.10, they are the same. But since then, they are different projects and they are developing different. So actually, I didn't look so much in the chain of log of Elasticsearch, more what was the last release of OpenSearch. Thank you. Welcome. So do we have any other um, question in the room? Yes. Um, so you are saying that we can um, replace um, Elasticsearch with OpenSearch. Ah, is a question, right? It depends on your user case because there are some plugins or some things that they didn't allow uh, compatibility. So yeah. it really depends uh, what kind of tools are you using. But from the client, if you are using the an a way to migrate it, like if you are writing in the latest one and one, you have to go back from Elasticsearch version 7.10 and then do the migration to OpenSearch. 100 and then go to open search 200. That would be what I would do if I would be migrating clients. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Actually, our open search maintainer is also here, so if you have more questions, you can also talk with him. Uh, he's right there. <laughs> yes. Thank you for your contribution. So, uh, do we have any other, other questions? They so are hungry. We do have a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, okay. So if you want to talk with me, we can also talk after the talk. Thank you very much. Okay.